today um, is show you what I've been doing for the last 62 weeks um, back at Whitefriars, um, the site of the Carmelite Friary. Um, just to show you where we are, it's the big red circle um, on Genefield Road to the west of the town. That's the old um, medieval routeway into town called Long Causeway. Um, Perth had four friaries, uh, Greyfriars, Carthusian and Blackfriars. Uh, the Carthusian is the only uh, house of that order uh, in Scotland. Now, it was 1982 um, when I first came to Perth to run a manpower services scheme on this, on this site. We knew that the Carmelite Friary was somewhere in the vicinity, uh, but not exactly sure where. Um, the gate pillar into Wells Hill Cemetery on the other side of the road says that this cemetery is opposite the site of the Carmelite Friary of Tully Lum. Um, now that's right, but it's actually just slightly further west, um, close to the joiner's workshop um, on Riggs Road, Genefield Road. Um, in 1982, we found the east end of the church um, and part of the East Range. Um, and in the church, we found 20 burials, um, a few of which were buried in these very unusual wood-lined graves. Um, these are not coffins as such, because there are holes uh, in the base. And I don't see how you could carry a body um, in a coffin built like that. Um, basically, the grave has been dug, and then the wood lining has been put in separate end boards, side boards, and bottom slats. The burial at the top left of the screen um, is separate bones that have been laid out in the coffin to look like a burial. That's not a complete body, um, so that is very unusual. Um, Whitefriars excavations of 1982 were published in a monograph in 1987, along with the excavations at Aberdeen Friary by Judith the Stones and Linlithgow Friary by Bill Lindsay. Um, that incidentally is available as a free download on the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland website. In 2008, a planning application um, was put in to build light industrial units on the site next door to where we dug in 1982, which was then occupied by a joiner's workshop. The um, black L shape you can see on the screen um, is the footprint of the proposed new building. Um, and after some site evaluation, um, we then opened a much bigger area um, at the north side of the site, um, where we were concentrating first on the area of the church. The first thing we found um, were these burials, which are dug into the demolished remains of the friary. Um, we found several of these in 1982, um, but in 2008 we found an awful lot more, um, and they're in family groups, men, women uh, and children, and there is no documentary evidence for the presence of this graveyard at all. Below that, um, once we dealt with the demolition levels, we ended up with the ground plan of the rest of the Carmelite Church, uh, the north side of its cloister, and the north end of the West Range. Um, as you can see um, on the slide that's up on screen at the moment. Um, what we also have at White Prize, um, slightly unusually, it's taken over by the Bishop of Dunkeld in the 14th century um, because he's having trouble with Highland raids um, up in Dunkeld and he moves down to Perth um, to the White Friars uh, to take it over as his headquarters. As part of that process, he completely rebuilds part of the church and extends it a further four or five meters to the west, um, as you can see in this slide that's on the screen now. Um, concurrent with that, there is quite a remarkable increase in burial um, inside the building. I think people in Perth and the vicinity probably decided that it was good for them to be buried in the church, if only to be associated um, with the bishop. Now, come the recession um, in 2008, the developer phoned me up one Friday afternoon and told me it was costing him too much money, so we had to stop excavations. We did that. The site was sealed with geotextile. Um, the spoil heap was moved in and it was backfilled. Um, and essentially, um, it was put to rest for a few years. In 2014, um, I got an email from the developer saying that he wanted to be back on site um, and could we meet to discuss this. So I, I agreed to meet him, we did that, and he explained to me that he would like it to be just me on site because he was conscious that he had to control costs. Um, I agreed to that, um, pointing out that it was going to take an awful lot longer. So come July, um, 
I reopened the trench, the spoil was taken out, we shoveled off down to the geotextile and then exposed the areas that we were going to work on. Um, at the beginning of excavations in July, I looked at this aerial photograph that had been taken by the Commission when we stopped digging in 2008, and it was quite obvious there was a very blank part of the church that we had never been able to work on. Um, I thought, okay, we'll start there and we'll deal with probably the 10 or 15 burials that are liable to be there. Um, and if I tell you that as of Friday, there are now another 174 burials from this church, um, and they're still going, um, that was quite unexpected. Um, so, first of all, um, I've started to find a lot more child and infant burials in the church. Interestingly enough, they all seem to be located um, running across the middle um, of the building. Um, I have some slightly unusual burials. We have a female burial here that had a jet necklace. You can see there are five jet beads and one yellow glass one. Um, this is very unusual for a Christian burial, um, and I have to say quite unusual for a medieval burial. Uh, we're more used to jets being associated with much earlier graves. Now, underneath that burial was a male burial who was buried under a Caithness roof slate. Um, you can see the peg hole indicated here by the red arrow. Now, this is interesting because the church is re-roofed in 1517 as part of the, re of the, of the rebuild, with 14,000 Caithness roof slates. So, if I argue that the burial of this um, male body is to do with being associated with that church re-roofing, then I think I can argue that this must be around about 1517. That means that the burial above with the jet necklace um, has to be post that date, which means the burial with the jet necklace is 16th century. Um, Beyond that, I'm now getting the earliest phase, which I think belongs to the actual Carmelite friary. And rather intriguingly, all of those burials have pieces of wood buried with them. Um, they look like staffs, but these are not functional pieces of wood. Um, it's still green wood. It's got the bark on it. So this is being cut and placed in the grave at burial. Um, there are a few parallel examples of this from England and Scandinavia, um, but I will need to do a lot more research uh, to understand exactly what is happening here. Um, other slightly unusual things that I've picked up, we have here um, a female burial with a fetal skeleton still in place in the pelvis, um, probably somebody that's died in childbirth. Um, also, she has um, two pieces of wood in the shape of a cross laid um, on top of the chest. Um, other burials have had rods rather than staffs. Um, and as you can see at the bottom of this slide, the wood um, is surviving in incredibly good condition. Um, other things, I have a skull with an eye patch um, still in situ, um, which is rather unusual. Um, I have two burials who have fake limbs. Um, instead of bone, we have pieces of wood that are replacing either a leg bone um, or an arm bone um, in this situation. And maybe that's an example of wanting the body to be entire um, when it is offered up to heaven. So they are putting the bits of wood in to make it look like it is a complete burial. Um, this burial here, I think we have quite good evidence that this was wrapped in a shroud, um, although there are no shroud pins from the excavation at all. Um, the crossed ankles, rather than the style of Michael Flatley, um, and the position of the arms, I think, indicate to me that this has been trussed up. Um, and there is at least one other burial um, very much like this one. Then we have um, this burial here, who is buried with a pair of shoes on. Now, when I say shoes, they're actually shoe soles, um, and they're actually soles from different shoes. Um, and you'll notice that the arms um, of this burial um, are in, clasped in prayer, um, and a lot more parallel research will be no need to be done uh, on that phenomenon. Um, then, um, I have got no parallels for these objects at all. Um, these were found over the right elbow um, of the burial in this slide. Um, they may be made of wax. This has to be confirmed yet um, in post-excavation, but they do remind me um, of Bishop's croziers, um, although they're tiny um, if you look at the scale, um, which is a 5p coin. 
Um, something else that I've picked up recently as well, under the rebuilt south wall of the church is another wood-lined grave, um, which also has um, translated bones in it. This is not a proper burial. Um, for a start, the, the ends of the leg bones are facing the wrong way, uh, which makes it obvious that this was not articulated um, when it was buried. This presumably has been moved from a part of the church when it is rebuilt. Um, other structural evidence that I'm getting from the building um, includes the rood screen um, from the later phase of the church, um, which is stone packed, um, and the chancel arch um, line from the early phase of the church building. Um, the stone packing for the rood screen includes this piece of tomb effigy. Um, this comes from a figure um, wearing chain mail um, and presumably is, is a patron um, or a benefactor of the church. Um, just recently, um, I may be getting evidence where both that effigy fragment and the translated bones have come from. Um, I think here in the north wall, um, I have a slightly damaged mural tomb, um, which has taken place when the church has been extended, um, and maybe this is when they're moving that body across to the other side um, of the church. Beyond the church, um, the rest of the friary, um, we have been able to look at the West Range um, and um, reopened that area in November of 2014. Um, and the first thing we found was this rather nice um, water stoop, which is from one of the demolished buildings on the site, um, which has been reused um, in the remains of the building. Um, also evidence for roof tile um, and a brand new spoil heap, uh, which makes an, an excellent photographic tower. Um, in the rest of the West Range, um, we have the robbed out lines of the walls. Um, all the stonework has disappeared. Um, and inside the building, we have these rather curious drainage features, which I think are probably taking waste from the floor above. Um, one of the drains, as you can see, stops dead um, at a wall face. So I think I can imagine there's an access point through to that from the floor above. All of these fills have been sampled, um, so we'll be able to work out later on what is actually in the fill of these features. Um, in the top end of the range, we have an anvil base associated with quite a lot of hammer scale. Um, so I think you can imagine they may well have been shoeing horses um, on the road past the friary. Um, come the Reformation, the idea is that John Knox preaches in St. John's um, and the congregation runs out and destroys all of Perth's friaries in two days. Um, there had been a lot of debate as to how feasible that is. Um, well, I can say to you, I think I'm getting quite good evidence for a controlled demolition um, of this friary. So I can see it's quite possible that it might be taking place um, in such a short amount of time. Plus, from the evidence of this medieval wine glass, um, they may well have been having a party uh, at the time they were doing that. So, currently, um, I have another 174 burials from the church, um, making a total of 276. Um, we currently understand the plan and function of the West Range. We have 600 or more small finds, ceramics, animal bone. What we still need to do is to understand what the other building is running south of the West Range with the drainage features in it. Um, I do wonder if it might be the Bishop's Lodging. Um, and we need to look at the South Range and the remains of the cloister. Also, um, in evaluation back in 2007, I was finding further human burials um, down at the south end of the site. So we still may have the graveyard to deal with. Um, so, at the moment, I have reopened the western end of the church. Um, I'm picking up more burials, including this one here, um, which is a later burial that has disturbed an earlier phase, where the earlier phase of burial has had this very ornate stone head box um, around the skull. This is very unusual, um, but I think is, is the only thing um, that would really make any sense for this. Um, also at the west end, we have a potential tower or porch foundation on the early phase of the church um, and further burial, which is taking place um, in the later phase of the church. Um, pieces of broken sculpted stone from the early phase of the church building uh, are being picked up as well. Um, and can I say, after having been on site for 62 weeks, um, you have to respect the Scottish weather um, and choose your site mascots carefully. 
Um, and seriously, do come and visit. Um, and if you'd like to give me a hand, please do. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.